for more than a thousand years. Kashgar has been a key oasis town along the fabled 7,000-mile Silk Road connecting China to the Mediterranean. A welcome respite between the vast Taklamakan Desert and the daunting Pamir Mountains. It paid dearly for its coveted location. You have only to look at the faces on the street to see traces of the many empires that conquered its people. The Silk Road may be lost beneath the desert sands, but Kashgar's market is still the largest in Central Asia. A window into the past, when ancient caravans arrived with golden dates and pistachio nuts, sugar and exotic spices, Egyptian silk and thin-skinned porcelain. In Kashgar, they found a fertile oasis filled with peaches, melons, nuts, honey, and a bewildering variety of grapes. With apothecaries boasting herbal remedies for any illness. Nowadays, Kashgar's traders stock more modern necessities. and local luxuries. The 21st century equivalent of gold and silver, frankincense and myrrh. But if you really want to step back in time and see what life was like in the 12th century, you have to get up early on a Sunday morning and head out to Kashgar's livestock market. It's a scene straight out of the Arabian Nights. But for the herders and tradesmen who come here to buy and sell, it's just another working day. They arrive from all over Xinjiang province. Some with a single sheep or goat, hand raised in spring. Others can barely keep track. The market is set up and open for business in under 30 minutes. But why stand on the sidelines and watch everyone else making money? Here's all you need to know to be a Silk Road animal trader. First of all, you should be able to tell the difference between a local sheep and a goat. Around here, goats usually have hair and straight horns. Sheep are woolly and have long, sad ears. Most importantly, Sheep have large tails and hindquarters, often beautifully styled. That's because an adult sheep can have up to 10 pounds of coveted tail fat, a delicacy in Western China. The local Uyghur love mutton, so sheep are very popular, a fact reflected in their price. A healthy sheep can sell for over $100, or a goat is only worth about half that. Just remember, you're looking for a high nose, long ears, pure wool, big tail, and a wide body. On to bovines. Yaks are furry, and they don't know how to move. They have scary horns, and know how to use them. Though they're usually very docile. The local cattle are huge and apparently quite stubborn.
Courses are pretty straightforward, though they're expensive. Starting at $300, they cost more than a motorbike. Camels are also easy. This being Asia, they're all dromedaries. They have much more pleasant dispositions than their one-humped Middle Eastern cousins. But they will set you back at least four sheep, or a horse and two calves. Check out your animals thoroughly, and be prepared to bargain hard. Though don't expect to win. These guys have been at it since they were in grade school. And if you happen to be a woman, you've got your work cut out for you. Once you've come to an agreement, seal the deal with a handshake, then pay up. You don't want anyone around here upset with you. And then, it's time to eat. You'll find almost every Uyghur favorite here. Lagman noodles, hand-stretched. Chicken kebabs served with fresh Uyghur bread. Stuffed lamb intestines. Samsas. Spicy mutton wrapped in dough. And polo. Rice pilaf. Cooked for hours in a blackened cauldron. With shredded carrots, glazed onions, peppers, peas, and butter. Mixed by hand. And of course, the all-important mutton. Or you can just skip all those pesky vegetables and have your meat straight up. For dessert, there's Kashko's famous melons. Most of the unsold sheep will head for the coast. The unlucky ones will go back to Kashgar, just in time for dinner. Small businesses like these line Kashgar's back streets. Most Uyghur are fiercely independent and prefer to work for themselves. In fact, almost everything in Kashgar gets made the old-fashioned way from table legs to farming tools. There aren't too many people in this world who can make a crowbar with nothing more than a hammer and a bag of coal. Almost every corner in Kashgar has at least one bakery Naan is practically a local currency. It's eaten with every meal. The spiked stamp is the baker's personal signature. It also helps the bread bake evenly. He dips it in a thick mixture of chopped onions, black cumin, and white sesame seeds, and then plasters it to the inside of the ton or oven until it's golden brown. You have the feeling that the world could end, and nobody in Kashgar would even notice. But just beneath the surface, Kashgar is ready to explode. Many Uyghur believe their way of life is under threat from the Chinese government. Depending on who you ask, China either occupied or liberated Xinjiang province in 1949. 
Since then, China has poured money into Kashgar's infrastructure, building plazas, topiary, and the largest statue of Mao in all of China. There's even a Ferris wheel, an amusement park. But they also imported millions of Han Chinese with promises of cheap land and loans for businesses in an effort to dilute the local culture. In 1950, Han Chinese were less than 1% of Xinjiang's population. Now, they're almost half. Some of the Uyghur responded by forming an independence movement and committing acts of violence. The Chinese government clamped down hard. They've forbidden local women to wear veils. And installed x-ray machines on almost every corner even at the entrance to local supermarkets. They've curtailed the local language and religious observation. But worst of all, the government was determined to wipe out Kashgar's beating heart, its ancient mud brick city. Marco Polo would have felt right at home here over 900 years ago. In 2009, the Chinese government announced that the buildings were an earthquake hazard, as well as a breeding ground for Uyghur nationalism and violent insurrection. Over 85% of the old city has been demolished, with more disappearing every day. leaving one small section as a living museum, a tourist attraction. The residents are compensated and move to modern apartments with running water and garbage collection. But many just want to go home. There's still one place in Kashgar relatively untouched by Beijing's modernizing aspirations. Once the sun drops over the Pamir Mountains, locals from all over the city head to Kashgar's night market. You wouldn't even know you were in China here. Mutton takes center stage. Straight up, or whatever bit you like best, from guts to lungs. Here's where you can get the best hand-pulled noodles in all of Kashgar. Topped in a thick, ragu-like sauce. Just come hungry. You'll want to try a bit of everything. The tea is free, and the price is hard to beat. For goodness sake, don't forget to leave room for the hand-turned ice cream. <laughs> China is hell-bent on economic development, 
And like it or not, Kashgar is coming along for the ride. The Uyghur and other minorities must find a way to modernize on their terms, while still preserving their culture and heritage, or their children will have no more place in this world than the camel caravans that once roamed this ancient land.